Goedemorgen. Hoe gaat het met u? Goed? Ik spreek geen Nederlands, so let's go with English. Um, so WPCLI is a command line interface for WordPress and today when we have so many command line interface tools, do we really need another one? Yes. Of course we do. What? <laughs> w yeah. WPCLI is not just the most powerful tool you can use to do stuff to WordPress. It is also fun and not scary. So now we are going to compare graphic user interface, which is WordPress dashboard, and WPCLI. Everything you can do uh, in WordPress, like fresh install, no additional plugins, just uh, default theme, you can do with WPCLI. So it's like equal, right? And this first level of using WPCLI, I like to think of as Guilfoy level. <laughs> but then you want to do more. You want to list Chrome jobs. It's OK, everybody does. And you want to export and import databases. With graphic user interface, you need additional plugins to do that, right? With WPCLI, you don't. You can do that on fresh install without any additional plugins. So now we have, it's the same, right? Yeah. And this new level of using uh, WPCLI, I like to think of as Pied Piper level. <laughs> but then you don't want to always export and import the whole database, right? Sometimes you, the database is just too big and you want just parts of it with WPCLI, you can do that. I had a client with a large database. Well, no, their website had a large database. Clients don't come with databases, right? <laughs> and I didn't need all that stuff, like team options and uh, millions of posts and users and everything. I just needed posts for past six months. With WPCLI, I could do that easily with just one command. And I could even specify this query more like uh, from this date to this date, but, or this author, or just this category. You can really specify it to meet your needs. So something that could take a lot more time, I was able to do in 30 seconds. And that's not all. With WPCLI, you can scaffold. You can scaffold plugins, teams, blocks, and many more things. And if we take a look at graphic user interface, which is your dashboard, there is no plugin for that. So now, if we compare it, it's still the same. It's not competition. But this new level of using WPCLI is Neo level. <laughs> and now you think that's all, yeah, right? No, it's not. With WPCLI, you can create your own custom WPCLI commands. Talk about inception. And some very smart hosting companies and plugin authors are doing this for years. So imagine you get a new project, you log into hosting, and oh my Gutenberg, there is SSH. <laughs> but then you look further and you find WPCLI, now you're flirting. But then you look even further, and you see they have their own custom WPCLI commands to do stuff on their server very quickly. Now, this new level of awesomeness is Mr. Robot level. <laughs> and now I convinced you, you want to start using it, and we can start using it. Now, I don't have any computer or server without it. So I'm not going to show you how to install it, but it's uh, pretty straightforward. And there is a nice documentation about it. All you need is three and a half commands. That's it. So first, now if you don't see this, this is uh, make.wordpress.org. Um, CLI Handbook Guide Installing. So you can find it all in documentation. <coughs> what you need first is this command to download, and it's working. So basically, you need only just one command to make it working. And then you run this half of command uh, 
to check if it's working, it's working. But you don't want to type PHP, WPCLI, PAR every time you want to run command, right? So what you do, you make it executable and then you move it somewhere in the path, in your path where you can execute it. Uh, and this is the most common name. So how you uh, type this, you will type command like that. So this is how you name it. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. WP is common because from the moment you install it, you will actually do a lot of copy pasting from Stack Overflow, right, and documentation. So you are warned. Keep it, you know, the common. And now, um, when we have installed it, we can run WP info. One too many. Okay. And then you see uh, the info on your system, on PHP, where it is, what version it is, your uh, MySQL, and your WPCLI. I have the latest stable version. Now, before we start using it, uh, there are a few things to know to make it easier for you to, to use it. First thing to remember is every CLI command, not just WPCLI, every CLI command is doing just one job. Don't complicate it. It can do massive work, but it is just one task. So keep that in mind. Also, the structure of the command always try to be consistent. So what you have is WP or whatever you called it. Then we have noun. This is entity you want to work with, and there are a lot of entities. Uh, you can check it in documentation or just in in your terminal. And after that, we have verb, which is what you want to do with this entity. And you will find a lot of entities have the same verbs, like add, create, remove, delete, list, generate. And after that, if this is not enough, if you want to make it more specific, what you can do is use flags. These are just parameters that allow you to, to uh, specify what exactly you want. At any point, there is a number of global parameters that you can use, such as help. I recommend it highly because complete documentation is in help. You don't have to go to a website. You will find everything there, all parameters. You will find examples and all uh, global parameters. And there is another uh, global parameter that I really love. There, there are many, but my personal favorite in the whole world, which is mind-blowing, is prompt. And we will see it today, how it works. So now we know the basics. And uh, what I want to talk to you about today is how you can utilize WPCLI to make your administration more fun, because we know that's not fun. And it's going to be faster. And we are going to talk about security. Yeah, WordPress and security and development and some magic. OK, so first administration, consider this scenario. You got email from old client. E client is not old. You, you work with them for a long time ago. And mm -hmm. since then, they never call, never write, nothing. And now they write you email that they cannot access their login URL. They try WP admin and login, and it just keeps sending them to 404 page. And that's because you were smart, and you changed the login URL to increase the website security. And you even advised your client to change it again so that even you don't know it. And let's pretend they did. <laughs> so they changed it. OK. And now nobody in the world knows the login URL. And you have two options. You can. Uh, go to database if you have access and search, which is boring. Or you can run one WPCLI command because we live in perfect world where every server has WPCLI available and we have SSH access to it. So yeah, you choose the second one. I support you. Let's do that. So I can say, so this is my imaginary client and my port number. And we can do this. So this is a remote. And if I type 
info just to see if I have it available. Yeah, it's not the latest version of WPCLI, but it is available. The only problem with this is I haven't heard from this client for a long time ago. I don't know that port number. I don't know where is the file I save that port number. I don't know even if I still have that file. And I hate memorizing port numbers. As soon as I memorize one port number, I forget all the parameters of WordPress functions that I ever used, and that's not good. But with WPCLI, you don't have to memorize anything. You can use aliases. You can create alias for every remote or local website that you are working on, and you don't have to ever think about logging or you know credentials, whatever. <coughs> And you can even create an alias for group of websites to do stuff in bulk. Just don't overdo it, trust me. So how do I know if I have alias for this website, for this client? I can type WPCLI alias list. Now here you see this verb, this is list. And here is the exception, we have WPCLI and alias. This is because alias is configuration of WPCLI on your machine. It doesn't uh, have anything to do with configuration of the websites. It's just on this machine. So if I check it here, you see I have two of them. All is created uh, when you create one custom, it's automatically created. And it's obvious for all aliases that you have, you don't want to use it. Maybe you want to try, I don't know, uh, if you have too many. You probably don't. And there is client, and you can see here uh, credentials that I use. Now, you can't just create alias and it, it's working. So before creating this alias, I have created connection between my computer and server through SSH keys. So this is just basic SSH administration. I'm not going to go through there. But when you have that connection, you can actually create alias uh, through SSH with uh, WPCLI, and now we can start using it. So I can say WP client, so you type WP and alias name, and after that uh, command like you would without alias. And while we are there, let me check uh, the version of this WordPress. Oh, it's up to date. So disappointing. <laughs> so th this is what happens when you change routines before talk. So this was supposed to be outdated, and I'm going to update it right now. So uh, when you want to uh, update or outdate uh, WordPress, you will use core update. And before, because I'm going backwards, I need to uh, well, not because I'm going backwards, because I'm not going with the latest uh, stable version. I need to specify version. So I'm going to say 5.8. We don't want to go too far back. It will broke. Uh, and after that, because I'm going backwards, I need to force it. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> you don't even have to go there. But I would suggest going there. Just check if it's still there. <laughs> OK, now it's outdated. And now we can pretend I did all the backup and everything that is recommended. And I can update it. So when you want to update to the latest version, you just do this without any parameters. And there we go. It's updated. I wasn't even there. And now, let's do what we wanted to do to find that login URL. So I'm going to use command that I used more than I care to admit. I love it. It's for executing arbitrary PHP code at server. So you go there and you just execute code. So it's evil. And I know it's not evil. <laughs> And I happen to know what is WordPress ver uh, function for getting the login URL. It's WP login URL. And 
here I'm going to just add a new line for printing. So this, this is not really important. This is just terminal stuff. And here it is. You should have asked Milana. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my imaginary client's website, completely updated and nothing to see. OK, so this task in real life could take you a lot of time that you cannot bill. You cannot log, you know, you would send email to your client like, I don't have credentials to hosting, and then they would reply, I don't have either. So then you go and search through your computer. Meanwhile, they replied, oh, I found it. Then you log in, and then you have to open ticket with support. It can take a lot of frustrating time. You don't want that. With WPCLI, you can just do it in second. And if you start creating aliases now for every website that you work on, in your WPCLI config file, you will find all credentials. You don't have to memorize where's the, the login that you saved. Everything is there. And you don't even have to open it because you can just find the, the alias. And in two years, trust me, you will love yourself. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, security now. I'm going to go to a local website I have. Now, this is just freshly installed WordPress last night, something like that. And uh, let's see what users we have. Again, you see user list, so it's uh, consistent. Now, in next few minutes, I'm going to be saying things that are obvious and you know them. And I'm not saying them because I don't think you know them. I'm saying them because there is a point behind it. So bear with me. So here we have admin. It's uh, first uh, number one ID, and it's administrator. So that is the default user we have. And now let's go to dashboard to see what this user can do. Now, this command WP admin, you don't see it here. Do you see it now? WP admin is a command that will take you to dashboard. Now, why we didn't use it with alias in previous example? It doesn't work with remote servers as expected. But you can use it with locals. Like, I don't remember any URL at all ever again. Uh, just type WP admin. And this command doesn't come with WPCLI right away. You have to install it separately. You can find it in documentation. It's just one command. Just run command, and it's there. So let's log in. And here is the obvious stuff. So admin has access to everything. There are posts, categories, tags, pages, appearance. There is this uh, full site editor, plugins, um, tools. You can edit team and plugin files in dashboard in 2022. I will repeat, you can edit PHP files from dashboard. If that's not dangerous, I don't know what is. <laughs> then, <laughs> then uh, settings. So this is obvious. This is what admin has. And when you Install WordPress, there is this default post, hello world, published. And default team will always show this username of this the only user that we have, right? So now we have only user, only one user that has access to everything, to editing PHP files in dashboard. And the username is displayed on the front end. So everything we need now is just password, right? And WordPress websites get hacked often. That's not a secret. We all know that. And I like to think of it because we are popular. <laughs> but you don't want your own website or the website of your client to be the tool to measure WordPress popularity, right? And yeah, there was a time when WordPress was this security hole on server. Yeah, granted. It was 2009. Now WordPress is secure. But it still gets hacked because there is this user factor, human factor. And it can be many things. It can be very jolly password. It can be installing plugins that are shiny, but we don't know where they came from. And no developer looked at it. 
right? And many other things. So there is a solution. It's obvious. It's right in front of us. Remove the human factor, right? Well, no, we cannot do that. We are building websites for humans to be used and created, right? So what we can do, we can work around it. And now I'm going to work around it. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to demote this admin. But first, let's see what user can do, what verbs we can do with user. So we can add capability, add role. We can create, delete, generate, get list. So you see all these uh, uh, consistent verbs, then remove capability, remove role, spam, unspam. With update command, you can actually change the password of the user. So if you want to have some fun with friends, you know, why not? <laughs> I don't know what's your cup of tea. And now yeah. I'm going to demote this admin, not remove, just demote. So I'm going to say WP user remove role. Now the parameter uh, WP CLI needs to know which user, even though we have only one. It needs to know which one. You can use a user ID or a username or email. I know it's user ID number one. And if we list users now, you see this role is empty. And what that means, if you take a look here at admin bar, when I reload the page, there's nothing. You can try to go to dashboard, but there's nothing because WordPress doesn't know what to do with you when, you when you have no role. It just, you know, okay, whatever. Uh, I don't know who you are. Even subscriber has more access than this admin right now. But I suggest keeping the password strong because you want your hackers to be amused. You don't want to disappoint there. But now we need someone who can actually do something in this WordPress. So we are going to create user. And now there is a number of parameters. Some are mandatory, some are not. I don't know. I know which ones because I practice for this talk, but I don't want to know <laughs> parameters. Yeah, I, I don't care. I don't want to memorize anything and I don't have to. Now here we have this, the greatest global parameter in the world on work. Just use prompt and prompt will prompt you with every parameter there is. You don't have to type anything. You don't have to think about typos or which parameters. You can just type what is unique for you. So user login, I'm going to use author. And user email, it doesn't really matter because we are in local. Uh, user role, so you see these are square brackets. That means it's optional. So th these are the only two uh, uh, mandatory parameters and the default role is subscriber I want author so I'm gonna say author user password now this should really be strong password but I have to log in with this user in a minute so let's pretend that this is a strong password even though it's not and now if you have used if you have installed some software on Windows it's just next, 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 <laughs> next. I don't care. Whatever. Okay, so we have two users now. And one is author, the other is no row. And let me just go and log in with this. Again, some obvious stuff. Author uh, can create posts, but doesn't know there are taxonomies, never heard of pages, no themes and plugins, no editing files in dashboard, nothing. So this is very, very limited uh, access for this user. They cannot even edit existing posts. They can just create their own posts. So we have these two users, one has no access at all, the other one has very limited, and from, from terminal, I can say WP plugin install and activate. 
and I'm going to say simple history. Nobody can do that from dashboard, but I'm doing it from terminal. And what this plugin does, it will give you a list of uh, events that happened in your WordPress install. And there is a list that you can see in dashboard if you had a user who can see it. We don't have that user, but we can do it from here. Simple history list. Now you see this plugin author is smart. They created custom WPCLI command for their plugin to be used in terminal and they've been consistent with list and I can see that here. I can see everything what happened. So how about that? when it comes to security, you know, moving everything that is dangerous and everything that is important to SSH level. Now, if this author was your client, they would want more access and they should, they should have. But the next role is editor and that's too much for my taste. So what are we going to do? Luckily, WordPress has capabilities and capabilities are these small bits of access and permission that you can combine and make every access unique. Now you don't want to make every user experience unique. You just don't have enough time for that. But you can find something between author and editor that will, you know, be safe enough. And this is what we are going to do. Uh, WP user add capability. Now again, we need user ID or username or email, I'm going to use ID, and we need to tell which uh, capability we are going to give them. So first, I think they should have ability to manage categories. And this is not just for categories, they will be able to manage tags as well. I think someone who is making posts should be able to manage taxonomies. Next thing, I'm going to give them option to switch teams and do the same for plugins. But it's not switch, it's activate. What this will do, it will give them ability to switch between existing teams, but not install new one. And for plugins, they will be able to activate and deactivate, but not to install new one. And when you have a problem in WordPress, when something happens and your WordPress doesn't work, this is the first advice you will get from anyone. Just switch to default team and turn, you know, uh, deactivate all plugins and then activate one by one to see where the problem is. So I think everybody should be able to do this, but no installing new plugins, no introducing new PHP code that developer mm. didn't see and approve. And there is another thing, um, themes and plugins, some plugins and even core are hiding some uh, uh, settings behind edit theme options. What this will give you in newer versions, uh, it will give you access to this full site editor <coughs> where you can edit header and footer and create menus and all the things. And there are, other things that you can add. So this is just like basic. Well, these, these are the four I learned. Okay. And you can find all of them in um, documentation. WordPress.org support article roles and capabilities. You can find all of roles here. So roles are actually just group of uh, capabilities. Role means nothing. It, it's a group of capabilities and you can create your own roles and just pack it with, uh, with your own set of capabilities. And here you can find list of capabilities for every role there is. So you can really refine everything. And I believe this is our responsibility to find this line where site owner can really have enough access to own the website, but not enough to break it. So we can do that with capabilities. And that's about um, security. Let's do development now. Yeah? Can you uh, add or alter a group of users? 
group of users. Let's let's leave that for the, for the end. Yeah, let's. I don't know. Probably. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> there is documentation. We'll see. Uh, so let's talk about development now. Um, when you start new project, oftentimes you need the dummy content, and it usually looks like another post, yet another post, another post. It's just. It takes a lot of time, it's useless because you just create posts, you don't have content and you need more users and you need menus and you need... Well, with WPCLI you can use verb generate with all the uh, entities that have it and you can generate posts, pages, users, widgets, menus, uh, custom post types, no, that's for uh, sca scaffolding, uh, taxonomies, uh, many, many other things you can take a look in, in documentation. And default number is 100 for each. And you can actually use the parameters to, to specify exactly what you want. And it will be fun, you know, to do it once, but second time it won't be fun to do it, to run all those commands. So what you can do, you can just put all that commands in bash script and just run bash script and laugh out loud because you are not doing it manually. Just run it and yay. But that's for boring stuff. Let's do interesting stuff. Scaffold is my favorite command. There it is. And let's see what we can scaffold. Block, child team, package, plugin, post type, taxonomy, team test, plugin test, underscores. Underscores is standalone team. Uh, that is what we call now classic team. It doesn't support blocks, but it, if you are still using classic teams, you can uh, use it, you know, just to learn or maybe you are using it in your project. And what we are going to scaffold, I mean, we, we listen about blocks every day, so I'm not going to scaffold a block today. I'm going to scaffold a plugin. Again, there are parameters. I don't care. Slug. Let's say WordCamp Netherland. Directory name, if I want to have it differently than Slug, I don't want to. Title, WordCamp Netherland 2022. Description, we don't have a time. Author, WordPress, community. URI, plug in URI, skip test, don't. Continuous integration provider is by default Travis, but you can set whatever you want if you want something different. Activate, yes please, uh, network we don't have. Force, if you already have a plugin that has the same uh, directory name, you can override it, but I don't have, so I don't care. And we created a plugin, so let's go there. Let's see what we have. So you have bin, and there are some uh, useful scripts that you can use. You can add more. Uh, it's ready for NPM. We all love that stuff, right? You can start writing tests right away. Uh, there is grunt file. So grunt was default uh, task runner for WordPress projects before Gutenberg. Uh, now with Gutenberg, we get more Webpack. But <laughs> grunt is still there, it's working, I mean, it's not broken. And in this grunt file, you will find one task. It will collect all your strings from plugin and create pod file for translation. So it's useful. You can convert it to Webpack if you want, or you can just use it and add more tasks. And uh, I want to show you this uh, readme file. So I'm going to open it in Nano because we want to close it eventually. And <laughs> yeah. So this is not just empty text file. This is a template. If you want to host your plugin at WordPress.org, this is what you need. And you don't have to go to WordPress.org and search for the page where it says what you need. It's already here. It already collected data I typed in while scaffolding. And what you need is just, just change what is unique for your own plugin. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, copy paste or whatever. Just write what is unique to your situation. And now, let's create this plugin, right? We didn't create it to do <coughs> nothing. Let's do this. 
So here is the, uh, the PHP comment that we all know and love. And here we can start typing. Uh, so always prefix your functions. I'm going to say the title. And I'm going to pass title. Now you see spaces. That is WordPress coding standards. Return. Always escape your strings. And always prepare for translation. Now, it's going to say WordCamp, Netherlands, 2022. My text domain is WordCamp. Netherland, and I'm just going to append the title here. This is our little function, and let's hook it to a filter called the title. You all know what's going to happen now, right? And my callback is WordCamp Netherland, the title. OK, let's hope it's working. Uh, yeah, save. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. We will fix it. <coughs> Here it is, our plugin. And what this plugin does is it will add WordCamp Netherlands 2022 before every D title occurrence. And I'm so happy menu is not that anymore. <laughs> it was before and it was very annoying. <coughs> so. This plugin was created in less than two minutes in Terminal during live talk. And it would probably pass code review at WordPress.org. Not because this function is amazing and I'm a great developer, but because it has everything it needs. And I didn't write any of those things. I didn't download, I didn't copy paste. It was there in my Terminal, one command, one parameter, that's all you need. And you should use this to make yourself a, a better developer, better developers first, because this is following all the standards and best practices that WordPress.org uh, uh, advise. But also, you can just start doing your project. I hate today when you have to set up project when there is NPM and then you need two days just to set it up and there's always some error and Docker is insane. So you need a lot of time. With WPCLI you can just do it. Just run command and start doing what you want to do. So help yourself. And now uh, we've been talking for 39 minutes and didn't break anything. What? <laughs> it's WordPress. Right? So let's break something. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do a little nightmare. Just remove semicolon. Right? And this is what will happen. Yeah. There has been a critical error. Seriously? <laughs> what can I do with this? If this is production, you really don't want anyone to know that error, but you want you to know the error. And if this was production, what you would do, you would download everything and then try to reproduce it and then fix it and then put it back on testing first to see if it's working and then on production. It's at least one day your website is not working. But with WPCLI, you can run, when there is error, you can run any command. I will run something with Teams because that's the latest loaded, right? So I want to cover everything. I'm going to say WP team list, whatever. It doesn't matter, really. All, all you need is your old WordPress to load. And this is what happens. Here is error that is n useless that we saw on front end. But here, you have the full PHP error. So there is syntax error, yeah, yeah, blah, blah. It's uh, something is missing, and we are not expecting on uh, line eight, 18. So let's fix it. I, I see everything. Where is the problem? So let's go there again. And the line was 18, right? Here it is. This was unexpected, and this is missing. OK. And let's go back, and it's fixed. Now, in real world, you will probably not fix it this fast, because it wouldn't be that little error. But 
you would be able to see where the problem is, deactivate plugin or whatever, just let the site live and then fix it in your local take time and test it and then put it back. So I think that's awesome. Now, it's time for a little magic. Yay! Um, I will go to my magic folder. <laughs> it has nothing in there, so it's completely empty. And we're going to run WP install. Database name is magic, as you expected, of course. Um, so this I'm not going to use. Next, next, next. Site title, magic. And URL as well is magic. It's not magic. <laughs> Admin. And it's cooking. <laughs> Hold on. It's cooking. So do we want to release the Kraken? I want to release the Kraken. Hi, Kraken. <laughs> and this is our magic. So it's just a WordPress website that we have installed uh, running the bash script. So let me show you that bash script to see what's there. I'm going to open it in Sublime Text Editor. Uh, it's in bin. Uh huh. It's there. OK. So uh, this is pretty simple. Bash script, it may, might look like there's a lot, but it's really simple. Uh, there are five uh, WPCLI commands here. So first, we download WordPress. Then we need to create config file. And this is uh, just getting database credentials. So I know that, do you see it? Do, do you want me to zoom it? See it? OK. Uh, so I know it will always be root. Uh, user for database for my local and I'm collecting here a database password even though it's always the same it's my root password but I don't want to have my root password anywhere in documents and I also don't want it to be in my bash history so what I'm doing here I'm just uh, using a basic uh, bash scripting to to get the inputs uh, hidden then I'm getting the database uh, name. And I really didn't have to do this because I have prompt. So I wanted you to see here, you can use prompt with partial input. You can uh, define what you want, or you can take it from another file. You know, you can go creative there. And for every other parameter, you can just say prompt, whatever. You know, I, I don't know. I will maybe change it in the future, maybe not. You can just say prompt. But what, why I did um, use this uh, database name, why I collected it separately, is because I never want to type again email for admin in my local. So I'm using it to actually build the email uh, address for this admin. So um, after uh, creating a config file, what we need to do is install. And you can see here, I'm just like talking to myself. It's just fun, you know, almost there, just one word. And when installing WordPress, you need, again, a number of parameters. I don't care to type. I don't care to, remi to remember what it is. I just can, you know, use it here and get my input uh, with bash script. Now, here is the rewrite command. And I want you to take a look at this one. So th this is the one we use to create a plugin. And you will see here, maybe not, it's too tiny, but there is index.php in URL. And this website was also built with WPCLI. Now, that is because you uh, need to change permalinks, right? And if we take a look, this other one, magic that we created and we used script, there is no index.php um, 
in URL. This is because we use this uh, rewrite command to change permalink structure, and I use hard uh, uh, flag to just flush the rules. So you need to be able to use the rewrite command. You need to enable Apache modules, uh, mod rewrite, uh, and then you can do it for everything. So this is, again, configuration for WPCLI in this computer. Uh, but all of that is uh, in documentation. And after that, I have Steam Locomotive because it's fun. And this is something just Linux users do, you know, uh, a little program. And then Toilet for coloring my letters because we want color in terminal. And then if I want to release the crack, so this is actual script I use. And I don't install WordPress every day. So when I do, I actually forget I have all of this. And when I do, I'm like, oh, <laughs> Kraken. So if I want to release the Kraken, I can use. I get Xcow to say, hi, I will be your Kraken, and I can open a uh, dashboard, or I can have a wonderful day. And this is just the beginning. So this is just installing WordPress. You can add here any uh, set of plugins that you always do, or you are always using one specific team, or you are always using Dutch language, or anything that you are doing specifically. You can set it here, and at the end, you can run that script for dummy content. You can just run one command and let it do. You just, you know, take a coffee or tea, or, and it, it's just not repeating things, not typing, not memorizing. Yeah, thanks. So I hope today you find uh, potential in WPCLI for uh, everything you do and to make your work more efficient and uh, more fun and more fast. And my name is Milana Tsap. I am WordPress engineer at XWP. I'm the loudest member of WordPress documentation team. I'm also a classical musician. So if you want to talk about any of those things, if you have any questions, just find me there. Thank you very much for your time.